us the start of day two now and as you can see it's a very different day to what it was before bright blue skies a little bit more of a breeze today so that's going to affect the conditions a little bit but the boats are lining up behind me now ready for the start there's a little over a minute to go before they're going to fire off down here and i caught up with one of the guys to find out how they were feeling back in the harbour guys you had a good day yesterday slightly different day today slightly brighter is that going to affect it much yeah, it's a little bit brighter, so maybe the fish will be a little bit deeper, and, uh, but it's good, it's not too warm, there's a nice wind, so uh, yeah, very good, very good day. Yeah. How do you feel with a start like that? It puts you up in the race now, doesn't it? It gives you confidence. It really does, yeah. It was a nice day. We really worked for it. In, uh, the whole day, a fish there, a fish there, but uh, in the end of, end of the day, we had a full card, so that's uh, really good. Excellent. Yeah. Another yeah. full car today and that will really sort the, yeah. the race leaders yeah. out. Yeah, that's a stressy uh, moment for today, uh, having a full car and uh, the perch is very difficult. They are really difficult to find. We had the last perch yesterday, five minutes before the end. So uh, oh, a lot of stress to have it just in time, but we did it. And now we, we start from zero again, so we have to prove ourselves again. So uh, yeah. That's we're gonna, what the game's about. We're going to try to work even harder than yesterday the start of day two it's a different day today from yesterday a lot brighter but you start as race leaders are you confident today yes we are quite confident of course there is slightly the, 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 the weather change there is another day we start from from the beginning we need to catch the the, the first fish quickly but yeah, yeah we are fine looking forward for the fishing another big pike would really help wouldn't it yeah absolutely <laughs> but but i think full cut should be should be enough that's the goal who are you concerned about who worries you in the rest of the field i, I think the finnish uh, guys uh, will be strong nearly all the three boats that are in top 10 luke Copens is is always uh, very good in in those competition he's one of the main stars the defending champions Enrico Ventura, Frank Busmeier, they are also excellent and many many other balls the, the, the placing it will be changing and we got two more days so well guys great day for you yesterday you were the first to fill your card I believe yeah no real uh, lucky lucky result so yeah we, we were pleased let's hope we can do it again more of the same today perch are going to be the hardest yeah yeah we start in the same way we just started yesterday and we will see how it goes and then develop on that let's have a look at these conditions the wind's a little bit stronger but the sun is a little bit brighter yeah, too. How's so, that so going to affect it? It will make it a little bit diff more difficult. In what way? You need to fight with the wind, so you have less control and, and you feel less. Plus, plus the, the sun intention will make that the fish go deeper, so you, that, that boat makes it that it is more hard to get the feeling with it. It'll be an interesting tell now, this one, won't it? Because you fell straight on some perch yesterday. Yeah, and so we're just going to hope that the spot's replenished, but commonly with the perch, you've just got one here, one there, so you can't guarantee on that. But we fell on the perch, but it was actually our Xander spot, so hopefully if we start there again we can get our Xander earlier and then we'll worry about the perch later on in the day, but it is what it is. Five, four, three, two, one, go, 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 go. And off we go, and this is it. We hang on as the boats really drop on. Now we were at 150 horsepower, just watch us being left behind now. This is flat out central, wacky races. Jumps the hell of it, Sluice, as the boats head off down the waters of the Herring Fleet, absolutely flat out, trying to race to get to the spots they want to before their competitors. This is absolute flat out, fast and furious racing here. And we're on board straight away now, and this is Daniel Andriani and Frederick Julian from Germany, and they are into a fish. It looks like it's a decent one and pike are the target in this area. They're fishing the weed beds and the shallower water and look at this, it's there right under the boat now. Big, big battle raging as he bends into the fish, just getting under control. It is a pole, oh, look at that there, it is a big, big pike. They've got to get this one in. Concentrate now boys, concentrate, it's coming in and yes, it's in the net that time. What an absolutely yes, fantastic baby. result. You can see yes. just how pleased they are. That is a massive fish. Whoa, look at that now as it's lifted out of the water. Big, big pike, one of the biggest of the day, no yeah. doubt. That will do them the world of good. Boat number 31 now, and this is the Finnish pairing of Tony Poyalainen and Antti Jussi Nodonen. Eighth yesterday but they're having a significantly better day today. Currently second, they've had a pike of 68, a Xander of 71, 65 and 53, and just one perch 
39 centimetres is their perch. They need two more perch to fill their card, but second at the moment and looking pretty good. So boat number 34 in front of us now, and this is the finished pairing of Ari Pattaya and Pekka Latinen. Let's just have a look at what they're doing there. Oh, there's a strike, and yes, is he in? Yes, they are absolutely fantastic. Really, really good news. That's a bite very quickly, and let's have a look at what this is. We'll run in a little bit closer shortly, but we'll just stay from a distance in a moment. Yeah, oh, that's a great, great start. That looks like a Xander. And it was a Xander, and coupled with the pike and also the perch they caught, it gave them a really good ending to the day. Sixth overall after day two. Oh, that is snicked. On board now with Albin Shaggy and Victor Soderberg, and they're into a fish. Let's have a look exactly what this is. They're targeting perch at the moment. Just nipping over the other side of the boat just to make sure it's clean. Oh, it is a perch. It's a decent perch as well. My word, look at that. That is a great fish. They're going to be pleased with that. It's exactly what they need. And that is a massive perch. Just look at the size of the lure in its mouth. That is absolutely enormous. Great fish, great result. Let's look at the lures all these guys are using. They have hard lures, soft lures and spinners. Let's start with the hard lures. The hard lures are lures like that, made out of plastic or out of wood, and they come with a diving bib up front. So they, they dive into different um, depth. Some of them are for the surface, others for the middle of the water, the others with a bigger lip, they go a little bit deeper. Next to it, we have the soft baits. And soft baits, most of the guys are using them for casting. So they use jigs with a certain angle here in front, so 50 degrees angle like that on the cast jig is ideal for jigging. Others, they use the vertical jigging style and they go for a 90 degrees angle like that. And all these soft bait materials need to be as soft as possible to get the best action out of it. Some of them, they have pedals for maximum actions, others they use for vertical jigging, the V-tile of, of, of soft baits. Last but not least, also there are some blinky blinky stuff available and especially if you're after the big pikes, spinner baits like that are really welcome. And if you go smaller, like chatter baits or spinners like that, this is for the perch fishing. And especially the chatter baits are extremely novel it's a jigging style, but with a little lip up front here that makes a lot of noise in the water. Pike, especially perch, love it. Back with the flying fins now in boat 31, and that looks like a perch. Well done, gentlemen. They know exactly what they're doing, and they've got their perch. Brilliant, brilliant result for them, that. It's only a small one, but it's another perch. So boat number 42 now, and this is the Anglo-Dutch pairing of Matt Boast and Jan Boomsper. They had an absolutely blistering day yesterday. With the first team to fill their car, they did it by lunchtime. Would you believe that? They very, very nearly did it today too. Three perch and three zander really quickly, but they struggled to catch a pike. In fact, it took them until early afternoon to get that pike on board. They're currently sitting in third position on the day that puts them in the top five overall. And what they're doing now, I presume, is looking for an upgrade either in their perch or alternatively, there's Ander. Boat number five here, Thomas Engert and Mark Petrovsky from Germany, part of the Mercury team. Currently running third, and they had a brilliant day yesterday. They were fourth yesterday, so that puts them at the top of the table. If the competition were to end now, they would win. They are first overall, two perch, one Zander of 61 centimetres and one Pike of 94 centimetres so far on their score sheet. And they're after Perch, one more, and Zander, two more to fill their card for the day. Now this area of the water is really, really popular. As you can see just behind me is the bridge. This is the Herringfleet Bridge. It's a little bit more than halfway down the competition stretch and it's about 25 kilometres away from where our main headquarters are up at Cape Helios. Now, the water here is pretty deep and it's a great area for Zander and also for pike. Every year we come here, there's lots of people that fish in this area because it's always pretty productive. And if you want to fill your card with Zander and pike, this is one of the places to be. Boat number 24 now, and this is the current leaders, the Czech team of Radek, Philip and Martin Stepka. They are fishing around the bridge stanchions here the support that this massive bridge has been built on. They're moving, but they're not going to move far. They've still got the trolley motor out at the front, and we'll probably see them just try around these stanchions here. And this is a really, really clever bit of angling going on now. They've already got their three perch, they've got their pike, and they've got their three zander. 
So they've got a very relaxed day's fishing ahead of them. We're not halfway through the day at the moment. You can hear the bridge rattling above us. And what they're doing is they're trying to catch bigger zander than the ones they've already got. They're unlikely to catch a bigger pike. The perch aren't going to make that much of a difference. But if they can increase a 40 centimetres under to a 60 centimetres under, and they can do that three times, that will be a massive, massive difference. On board again with Albin Shaggy and Victor Soderberg, and they're into yet another fish. Running second on the day, this looks like it's a decent one. Is it a pike or is it a zander? Surely a pike. Net at the ready, just getting that fish under control. Bit of side strain there, one way, then the other, just bringing it in. It's a pike thrashing like that, surely. Yes, it is. Oh, he's happy with that one. Decent pike. Oh, and look at that, another one, double take. Would you believe it? There's one in the net and there is another one on the other rod as well. Now, when your luck's in, your luck's in. What on earth can you say? Two pike, they've been chasing pike for ages. Some people can't catch one, they've actually got two. Coming closer to the net now. Concentrate, boys, is that going in the same net? Yes, it is. Oh, look at that. Not one, but two. And that was that for the day. The competition was now over and the boats made their way back to the harbour. When the scores were confirmed, they looked like this.